Let's talk some chess. This game was played in 1985 between John Nunn and Alexander Belyovsky. There's a really exciting tactical breakthrough in this game uh, that leads to just a really excellent attack um, in a nice sort of finishing position. So let's get right to it. Uh, Belyovsky opens us up with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, and bishop g7. This is the king's Indian defense. Um, all very standard moves that are still played even today. We have e4 uh, pushing in the center, d6, f3, and kingside castle by uh, John Nunn. And this will be an important theme in the game as our, uh, as it is an important theme in many games, uh, getting the king to safety right away, castling, getting the black king out of harm's way while uh, Belyovsky's king is still sort of stuck here on e1. And we'll see how that plays into the development as the game progresses. Bishop to e3, getting a piece out, uh, knight b to d7, connecting the two knights, and now queen to d2, connecting this queen and bishop, this nice battery. Um, maybe you bring the bishop to h6 and exchange this strong fianchetto bishop on g7. Uh, we have g5, sort of challenging white's strong center, um, and now d5 closing the position and sort of just keeping these uh, pawns um, solid in the center. Um, sort of makes sense that Belyovsky doesn't want to exchange and sort of open up the uh, d-file because, of, of course, his king is still on e1. So just keeping the position closed um, for now. We have knight to e5. Uh, the knight is now sitting pretty on this e5 square, controlling a couple of important squares in Belyovsky's camp. And now h3, uh, preventing maybe, I'm not really sure about this move, but it's, it is guarding the g4 square, which is sort of eyed by the two knights and the bishop, uh, guarding it extra because the pawn on f3 is already guarding it but that's that's the move we've got uh from belyovsky knight to h5 now bringing the knight closer to the enemy king and now bishop to f2 um looks like a strange move but it is the move recommended by the engine i think it's the the idea here is we can now bring the bishop to h4 as well as bringing it to uh, to e3, so sort of uh, getting um, more of a range for that bishop, but now f5 by uh, by uh, none really going for it and trying to break in, break open this closed pawn structure and really uh, punish Belyovsky for having this king on e1. And here we have uh, pawn takes on e5 by Belyovsky, and probably what he expected here is just pawn takes back on uh, g5. But this is the kind of critical tactical moment in the game, so see if you can find John Nunn's move while I give you a couple of seconds. <clears throat> okay, the move that was played here that really sent this game into, uh, sort of sent it along the, the path where it would eventually finish was Rook takes on F5. And this looks at first sight like a sort of uh, quiet, uh, reasonable move, um, but if, uh, the idea is it allows a, uh, a really nice response, which is basically um, something that you can't resist playing, and in fact it is what Belyovsky plays, it's g4. So pushing the pawn forward, and of course this comes with a fork on the rook and the knight, so here John Nunn by taking with the rook on f5 is essentially sacrificing a piece when this pawn comes to g4, you can't save both the rook and the knight. But John Nunn says that's okay. I'm 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 fine with that. I'm going to take rook takes on f3, and now Belyovsky has really no choice but to pick up the knight on h5, which he does. But now you get queen to f8 by Belyovsky, doubling up the queen and the rook on this open f file, and now all of a sudden you sort of have. Uh, the queen and the rook challenging this bishop on f2, and uh, nun's pieces are really not working together in any sort of concordance, and we'll see that theme continuing as the game progresses. The bishop, knight, and rook are undeveloped. The king, again, is still stuck on e1, and here uh, the important thing is that you cannot castle king side to get, or sorry, castle queen side to get the king to safety because then rook takes on uh, f2 um, as the king was defending the bishop in addition to the queen defending the bishop. So the king has to stay on e1, and the king is sort of stuck in the middle of the board for now. And instead, uh, Belyovsky goes with um, knight takes... Wait, I'm sorry. He does not go with that. He goes with knight to e4. <laughs> sorry. He does not go with knight takes to f3. This just allows um, knight takes with, with check, picking up the queen on d2. Ooh, sorry. Picking up the queen on d2 with a nice uh, royal fork. So instead, just uh, knight to e4, now trying to marshal the defenses around the king, also adding a defender to this bishop. So now maybe the king can castle uh, queenside and get out of harm's way. But now bishop to h6, preventing that king from moving because this bishop to h6 move comes with an attack on the queen on d2. 
So queen to c2, getting out of harm's way, but now queen to f4, moving up the board, and now all of these pieces you can see getting closer and closer to the enemy king, still stuck on e1, and now this king really has no hope of ever castling queenside because the queen and bishop are both sort of eyeing this c1 square where the king would hope to land if it were to castle a uh, kingside. So here we have knight to e2, um, developing the knight uh, with an attack on the queen. Seems like a sensible move, um, but this is actually the sort of incorrect move in the position. There is a way to get back into this game, and it's by taking uh, uh, on f3. So knight takes rook on f3. And I'm not sure why Belyovsky didn't go for this, uh, probably because he saw the next move. Knight takes on uh, f3 with check, and then after king to d3, uh, bishop to f5. And this just looks like a really brutal attack. You have uh, the queen and bishop eyeing this uh, c1 uh, square with uh, potentially checkmate. The knight is pinned by the bishop uh, to the queen, and so this doesn't look very fun. But you can get out of it by playing this really savvy move bishop to g3 attacking the queen. The bishop is protected by the knight, and the queen uh, doesn't really have many squares to go to. So here it would be bishop takes on e4, bishop takes, bishop takes with check, king takes, bishop takes, and now um, uh, white is up the exchange, and uh, the attack has completely petered out. So that would actually work as a defense. Uh, unfortunately for Belyovsky, he did not see it. Fortunately for us, we get to see the conclusion of this great game. So instead of taking the rook, which I just mentioned on uh, f3, we get, uh, that's not what I want to do, we get knight to e2 attacking the queen. Looks like a very sensible move. Uh, but now we get bishop takes on f2, um, sort of forfeiting the queen, and of course it's not a true forfeit because if knight takes queen on f4, the rook just picks up the queen on c2. Um, so instead, uh, knight takes on f2, and now knight to f3 with check. This knight on uh, e5 is becoming the monster that it's destined to be, um, checking the king. The king can't move to uh, d2 because it's guarded thrice by the knight, the queen, and the bishop. So uh, king to d1, but now queen to h4. Um, um, eyeing this lonely knight on f2, which is undefended. So uh, Bel Belyovsky moves it away, knight to uh, d3, but now a wonderful developing move by nun, bishop to f5, pinning the knight to the queen, and now you just have these two bishops wonderfully activated, slicing across uh, Belyovsky's camp. The knight is obviously controlling very important squares, the queen is in the mix, the rook is ready to join the attack, whereas by contrast, Belyovsky's pieces are these two knights are hemming in this bishop. The rook can't go anywhere because the knight's guarding these two squares. This rook on a1 will never see the light of day, and it's just a total contrast of peace activity. And the, the material is in Belyovsky's favor. If we count up quickly, then we see, um, you know, three minor pieces for both sides, uh, but Belyovsky has two rooks. But of course, uh, in essence, Belyovsky has zero rooks because this rook on a1 is not getting into the game, and this rook on h1 can't really move. So uh, just a wonderful uh, example of peace activity and getting your pieces coordinated in the attack. Uh, we have knight e to c1 here protecting this knight on d3, uh, protecting it now with the bishop and the knight, so protecting it twice with one move, which is sort of a nice idea. But now knight to d2, uh, really you know, the knight is imposing its will, um, controlling all of these squares, uh, and of course the queen and the king cannot capture um, because the bishop is guarding uh, all the way from h6. Um, here we had uh, pawn takes on h6, uh, pawn takes back on h6, so just <laughs> a sort of silly exchange on the h-file, and now bishop to g2. Again, just trying to develop a piece, maybe get this rook into the game somehow, but now knight takes on c4, picking up a pawn, and now this knight can come to uh, e3 with a royal fork of the king and the queen on c2. So to prevent this, we have queen to f2 getting out of this potential fork and also maybe eyeing this bishop on uh, f5. It's defended for the moment, but we'll see. Um, and now knight to e3 uh, with check. Anyways, king moves to uh, e2. The king can't obviously move to uh, c2. And if the king moves to d2, then the knight moves away with a discovered check from the bishop. So that does not work. So king to e2 and now uh, queen to c4 um, attacking this or pinning this knight and attacking it. Now this poor knight, which was just pinned by the bishop to uh, the king, is now pinned by the queen to the king. It's attacked by the bishop and the queen. It is defended twice by uh, the knight and the king, so it's defended um, for now, but it looks very hard to defend with any other pieces. Here, um, Belyovsky tries to open up the g-file, bishop to uh, f3, because he still is up material, he still is up this rook and trying to activate his rooks, uh, but now speaking of activating rooks, you have bishop, I'm sorry, rook to f8 by none, uh, getting his final piece into the game on this open file. 
lined up with the enemy queen. Rook to g1, uh, lining up with the enemy king, but now knight to c2, um, and now you can sort of just see all the threats uh, from the knights and the bishops and the queen. Um, and here, Beliovsky plays sort of his final move, which is not that. I don't know why I did that. King to d1. Um, I don't know why he made this move. There's not any good moves in the position. This one is just as bad as any, but it uh, abandons the defense of the knight on uh, d3. So after uh, John Nunn took the knight with the bishop on d3, uh, Beliovsky resigned the game um, because now uh, the material is much closer to equal. Beliovsky still at the exchange, but the material is closer to equal and he's still getting attacked from every angle and really has no defense um if you just if you take with the knight here then queen takes and uh we can see where this is going with the uh the bishop and the knight and the queen uh, that's obviously not going to end well um it, knight to b3 sort of getting out of um this area but then knight to e3 with check king to e1 uh queen to b4 uh, knight blocks, but now knight to c2, picking up the rook on uh, a1, and now none will be up material in addition to having a better attack going. So that's just one continuation. There are many, but after this bishop took on uh, d3, Beliovsky resigned the game. So a great game. Again, just look at all these pieces. The rook is pinning the bishop to the queen on f3. This bishop has been in control of this important diagonal all game, as has this bishop. This knight has just been dancing around the board and causing checks and threatening forks. And of course, the queen is sort of the power broker behind it all. So hope you enjoyed it. A uh, really fun tactical sort of setup. And again, I want to just go back to the move that started at all, which was rook takes on f5, allowing this g4 fork of the pawn and the rook. Uh, but sometimes it's worth it to open up, to give up some material, to open up the position when your enemy still has the king in the middle of the board. So thanks for watching. Drop a like, drop a subscribe. Uh, let me know of other games you'd like me to review, and we'll see you next time.